G'day, welcome to Down at the Woodworks. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this cheap, simple, shallow wall cabinet. I first ripped down some 16mm MDF into the four pieces that would make up the outside of the cabinet. These were all the same width. I then used the jointer to remove the saw marks from one edge of each board that was going to be the front facing edge. The edge against the wall didn't need to be done. Next I cut a groove in each board for the 6mm MDF backer board. I ran each board over the blade set to the depth I wanted and without moving the fence. And then using a test piece I adjusted the fence until I had the right fit for the back of board and then finished cutting the groove in each piece. I made this simple right angle jig that referenced along the front edge of my router table and this was so I could route some 16mm wide channels on the inside of the side panels to help locate the top and bottom panels and the internal shelves. Using a combination of a spacer block and my table saw fence, I was able to cut the channels in exactly the same location on both side panels, making sure the shelves ended up level and parallel. The rebates on the ends were for the top and bottom panels and the other channels were for the internal shelves. Here I'm checking that my alignment is good and it was. I was using a half inch spiral bit to cut these channels so I needed to adjust my table saw fence back just a little to creep up to the right width for a snug fit. Perfect. With all the components milled up it was time for paint. I first brushed the undercoat onto the edges so I could get a nice thick coat because the edges of MDF are very thirsty. I used masking tape in all the grooves to eliminate any paint getting onto the glue surfaces when I spray painted the boards. And to keep paint out of the back of board groove, I just used some lengths of 6mm dowel laid in the groove. Here's a shot of all the cabinet pieces sprayed with sealer undercoat. After sanding everything down, here I am spraying the final coats of satin white on all the pieces. But you can't tell because it's white going over white. So you'll just have to take my word for it. Once the paint had dried, it was time for assembly. But before I did that, I fitted the cabinet part of the hinges. This was much easier now than if the cabinet was assembled. I used that centre hole in the hinge bracket to eyeball my height mark on the masking tape. The first step in the assembly was this shortened shelf and upright piece. They were different to all the other shelves which were the full width of the cabinet. These were only glued together so that no fixings were visible. Once 
Once the glue had dried on those first pieces, I could finish the assembly. The shelves and bottom panel of the cabinet were glued in place and nailed through the sides. The cabinet was wide enough that it fit between two walls with a very small gap either side, so the sides wouldn't be visible. Here you can see that shortened shelf and upright piece in the top left hand corner. The cabinet is actually upside down in this shot. Next I cut the back of board to size and painted the inside face of it off camera. After sliding the back of board in place, I could then glue and nail the top panel in place to complete the cabinet. The cabinet was going to be hung using a French cleat, which I cut from a 19mm pine board. The back of board was set in 19mm so that the cabinet would sit flush against the wall. The top cleat was fixed to the back of the cabinet with glue and screws. I drilled pilot holes first. and then remove the cleat to enlarge the holes in the side panels for screw clearance. The bottom cleat was fixed to the stud in the wall. And here is the cabinet hanging on the wall. It was very hard filming in that tiny space. The doors for the cabinet are going to be shaker style doors and uh, they're also made out of 16mm MDF. I've gone ahead and cut all my pieces for the doors. So I've got uh, two styles which run the full height of the door. Actually these ones are plus 15mm because I'm not going to have a handle on the door. I'm just going to have a small lip at the bottom where you can just open the door with your hand. So I've got the two styles and uh, the two rails. So uh, obviously that's the uh, configuration of the door with a panel inset in the middle. Now you can see there I've got a panel just sitting underneath uh, those components. It's uh, six mil MDF for the panel. The way I'm gonna put these doors together is a way that I saw Peter Millard do and I'll provide a link for his video to that. Basically what it is, you run a six mil groove for the full length of the inside of each style and then on the rails you run the groove on three sides so on this end along that edge and on this end and what that does is allow first of all allows you to put the panel in but it also gives you a small basically spline um, cavity here and then what you do is you just take another uh, six mil piece of six mil mdf and slide it in and glue that together and um, yes yeah, it's a fairly easy way of uh, making the doors and it looks pretty sturdy, so I'm gonna go with that. For the grooves, I used my slot cutter in the router table. The slot cutter is only four millimeters wide, so after making the first pass on all the pieces,
I adjusted the height of the cutter to enlarge the grooves to 6mm with a second pass. Here you can see where those splines I mentioned will get glued in. With the rails and styles together in a dry fit, I measured up for the internal panels and cut them out. And I cut out the eight splines as well. I wasn't confident trying to glue the whole door together in one go, so I glued one corner together first, and then once that was set, it made the rest of the door glue up much easier. To make sure the door is glued up flat, I clamped on a pair of calls at each end. Then I glued in the splines and left everything to set. Once the glue had set on the door assembly, the top and bottom were flushed off on the table saw. Next job was to drill out the doors for the door part of the hinges. And drill the mounting holes. With that done, the doors are sanded before being spray painted to match the cabinet which I did off camera. When the paint was dry, I fitted the hinges to the doors and then fitted the doors to the cabinet. Did I mention it was very difficult to shoot video in this tiny space? Well, I think the cabinet turned out great. It really serves its purpose well. And hopefully you found that way of making the shaker style doors interesting. I certainly did when I watched Peter's video, so I definitely wanted to give it a go myself. Now I know there's a few critics out there of MDF, but to be honest, when it comes to a project that's gonna be painted or a paint finish, you really can't go past MDF. It's cheap, it's stable, and it's easy to get. Thanks for watching through to the end of the video. Hopefully you got something out of it. If you wanna know what I'm up to in between videos, you can follow me on Instagram. And if you haven't done so already, I do invite you to subscribe to the channel. That way you can uh, see what's coming up. But until the next one, you guys all have a great day.